Hello everybody, this is David Farrell with another computer music video. In today's video we're going to be talking about FM synthesis, specifically using Ableton Live's operator instrument. This is the third synthesis video I've made. I made one on additive and then one on subtractive synthesis methods, and I'd recommend that you watch those or feel comfortable with those concepts before you move to this one. This one will assume you already understand some of that. With that out of the way, let's get started talking about FM, what it is and what we can do with it. The easiest way to describe frequency modulation and how it works is to compare it to something that we've already used a little bit, which is a low frequency oscillator, or LFO. We know that an LFO is an oscillator just like the ones that we use to generate sounds in most of our synthesis methods, but with the LFO we don't actually hear the frequency. Instead, we hear its effect on a different oscillator. It is used to modulate a different frequency. FM synthesis works the same way. We have a carrier frequency, whose oscillator we hear, and we have a modulator frequency, which we don't hear. Instead, we hear the effect it has on our carrier. Now, with the LFO, we use a frequency that is below the rate of human hearing, and we hear it perhaps move the pitch of our original carrier frequency up and down in the wave shape of that LFO. In frequency modulation, we're going to be using sounds that are at audio rate, that are above that 20 hertz limit where human hearing starts. And the effect is different. We don't just hear a sound sort of moving up and down like we do with an LFO. Instead, we generate new frequencies. These frequencies are called sidebands, and they create a more rich spectrum from our original sound. So what is the frequency content that we're going to get out of all these extra sidebands that we generate in frequency modulation? Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the math here. This is a simplified version of the math. Uh, it's actually a little bit more complex than this, but this gives you the ba most basic idea. We're going to be creating sideband frequencies both above and below the carrier frequency. That's how FM works. Their intensity, their loudness, will largely de depend on the amplitude of the modulating frequency. The higher the amplitude of the modulating frequency, the more intense that you will hear all of these different sidebands. As for their frequencies, we're going to be generating frequencies above and below the, our carrier frequency at every positive integer multiple of the modulating frequency. There's an example that shows this. So, if our carrier frequency is 1000 Hz and we're modulating it with a 200 Hz frequency, then we'll get sidebands at every multiple of 200 above and below our carrier of 1000. So, 200 Hz times 1 is 200. That means we'll get a frequency at both 1200 Hz and 800 hertz. Those are going to be our first sideband pairs that we'll hear. We'll hear the one that's 200 above and 200 below. We'll also hear frequencies at 200 hertz times 2 above the carrier and 200 hertz times 2 below the carrier. That would be 1400 hertz and 600 hertz. And we might also hear sidebands at 200 hertz times 3 above, 1600 hertz, and 200 hertz times 3 below, 400 hertz. And we can do this to infinity. Depending on how loud our modulating frequency is, we might not actually hear all of these, but if we get it loud enough, we can hear a lot of them. That's the basic idea behind how these sidebands are generated. And that gives you, hopefully, a rough idea of how FM synthesis works. Let's put it into action so that we can see how to do it in operator and get a sense of what kind of sounds we'll be hearing. Okay, I've opened up my set of Ableton Live and I've dragged an operator instrument in. This is a brand new operator instrument. And just like we've done before, we're going to start by looking at the algorithm of operator. Before, when we were working with additive synthesis, we were primarily working with this algorithm. And we will recall that the algorithm describes how our oscillators are interacting with one another. In this shape that we've been using for additive synthesis, our, our oscillators all run in parallel, which is to say we're going to hear the frequency that each of them create. Now that we're talking about FM, we can take a look at all the other oscillator configurations. When we have an oscillator on top of one another, what that means is that the oscillators will be modulating the oscillators below them. 
This allows us to create use a bunch of different setups that use FM synthesis. For example, in this first setup, each oscillator modulates the oscillator below it. D modulates C, C modulates B, and B modulates A. All of these will give us FM synthesis in a particular way. We can look at some of these other combinations. For example, in this combination, we hear A unmodulated, B is going to be the carrier, it will be modulated by C, which is in turn modulated by D. In this configuration, where we have A, B, and C, we'll hear each of them in parallel as carriers. D will modulate all three of them. You can see that operator gives us lots and lots and lots of configurations to set up FM differently. I'm gonna start pretty simple. I'm gonna start by just using two oscillators, I'm gonna turn off C and D. So all I'm gonna hear is A as my carrier frequency and B as my modulating frequency. Again, when we use operator for any type of synthesis, we just have to take a look at what's going on in terms of this algorithm to understand how our oscillators are interacting with each other. Which ones are we gonna hear as carrier frequencies and which ones will we hear the effect of as modulating frequencies? Okay, now that I've set up my algorithm, I can start building some sounds. Like any operator instrument, I can operate in fixed frequency mode or in the sort of keyboard mode. Today, I'm gonna to work in fixed mode so that we can just see our numbers very clearly. I've also grabbed a spectrum tool so we can take a look at what's going on. I'm gonna set my carrier frequency, oscillator A, to 1000 hertz. I'm gonna set my modulator frequency, oscillator B, to 200 hertz. I know those are those because I know which ones are which because I've looked at my algorithm and so I know what it does. If I play, I'm just gonna hear a sine wave right now and that's because my modulating frequency is turned to zero, uh, it's not, not turned on at all. As I turn up the level, we're gonna to start to see sidebands emerge. Let's take a listen as and watch as I turn up. I turned up the oscillator just a little bit and we started to see those sidebands appear. And we started to see them appear in a predictable way. We saw the ones appearing 200 hertz below, 400 hertz below, 600 hertz below, as well as 200 hertz above, 400 hertz above, 600 hertz above. As we hear them, we get to hear all those different frequencies and our sound moves from a very plain and bare sine wave to a much richer sound. Let's hear again, and I'm going to keep turning up my oscillator so that I get more and more sidebands at higher amplitudes. You can see as we get very high, the sidebands start to really take over the sound and it becomes a very noisy, noisy buzz. And so if we keep going up and up and up with our FM modulation, we'll get so many sidebands that the sound will become quite noisy. That's a nice basic example of FM synthesis using two sine waves. The ratio that I chose between the modulating frequency and the carrier frequency had a lot to do with the quality of my sound. I chose 200 as my modulator and 1000 as my carrier. That when we choose simple whole number ratios, like this 5 to 1 ratio, we're going to typically get sounds that have a lot of very harmonic sounding overtones. If we choose a number for our modulating frequency that is not a simple whole number ratio, that doesn't divide evenly into the other, then we're going to get something that sounds a little bit noisier and more inharmonic. I'm going to change my modulating frequency. I'm going to change it from 200 hertz to 237 hertz. Okay? That's not a huge change in, in, in numbers, but it is going to have a pretty big effect on my sound. I'll turn my level back to zero and gradually turn this up. We'll see the same basic pattern of sidebands appear, but because the, the ratio of frequencies is different, the sound will be a little bit, uh, a little bit different as well.
that inharmonic spectrum is a bit noisier and so uh, is going to have a very, very different quality. It tends to be really nice to synthesize something that has a sort of metallic sound. If I change my general uh, envelope and I can copy this envelope uh, to, to, I can copy this envelope from some of my others. I get something that has almost a cymbal-like quality. A very metallic tone. And that's very characteristic of what we hear from inharmonic spectra in the real world. That was FM synthesis just using sine waves, which is a very traditional way to use FM synthesis. Indeed, one of the cool things about it is that we can take two really simple waveforms, two sine waves, and create such a complex and frequency-rich sound. Imagine trying to build that FM synthesis sound using additive synthesis. You would need to set up an oscillator to every one of those partials that we heard. Every one of those sidebands would need its own oscillator. With FM, all we need are the two oscillators, and we can create so many frequency-rich sounds. Uh, that's just using sine waves. However, we don't need to only use sine waves. We know that operator is capable of generating lots of waveforms. So let's try building a sound using a different waveform. Rather than using the sine, I'm going to set up my 64 partial square wave. Here it is, and you can see all those odd number of partials showing up. I'm going to leave my modulating frequency as a sine wave and turn it up, and we'll see and hear what happens. Ooh, that's pretty fancy. If you can't tell what's happening, what we've got here is that we're generating sidebands from every partial of my square wave. So every partial is generating those sideband pairs. You can watch and see them emerge from in, in spectrum. I'll do it again for you. Here they come. And so when we use these other waveforms, all the partials start to get their sidebands. This becomes a much noisier, much frequency rich sound even faster. If we switch things around, we can see what happens as well. I'm gonna switch back to a sine wave as my carrier frequency, but I'm going to switch to a square wave as my modulating frequency now. we can see every partial of the square wave is generating its own set of sidebands. These are cool effects. They give us different possibilities. Note that the frequency co content becomes super rich, super fast. And so be careful, if you turn these things up really high, eventually you're just gonna be left with a super distorted, very, very noisy sound. Uh, if that's what you want, then awesome, you did it. If not though, if you want something subtle, you just wanna be careful with these waveforms and how you use them. Of course, with operator, we can set up our FM sounds to work with all the other stuff we know as well, our LFOs, our filters, our envelope generators. I've quickly put together an FM sound here using just two of my uh, sources, oscillator A and oscillator B, both on sine waves. Both of them have different envelopes, though they're similar, and so the FM will fade in a little bit more slowly than the sound itself. The LFO set on a sawtooth up is modulating frequency B. That means it's modulating the modulator. It's moving around the frequency of my modulating frequency, but it's not moving around my carrier frequency at all. And my filter set on a band pass in the upper range of the spectrum, also being modulated slightly by my LFO. You can hear the LFO moving around the resonance, the filter sort of dampening some of the different partials. This is a really simple version of the sound. If we changed our LFO to something else, if we turned up the rate and the amount, well, you get something that's kind of got a cool rhythmic quality to it. Turn up that rate even faster. We get something that has kind of a cool computerized quality to it. That's a fun sound. 
a lot of possibilities now that we know so many different methods. We've got our filters, we've got our LFOs, we've got our oscillators, which we can combine in so many different ways. Um, this is one of the reasons I love Operator as an instrument. It just has so much potential to create varied sounds. And with that, we come to the end of another video. Today's video was an FM synthesis video talking about using FM and Ableton Live's operator instrument. Of course, like most of these videos, anything that uses FM is going to work in pretty much the same way. And so the ideas here are applicable to a lot of software and hardware implementations of synthesizers. We talked about the basic idea, the idea of the modulating frequency and the carrier frequency. The frequency that we hear, the carrier, and the modulator whose effect we hear. And in this case, when our modulating frequency is at audio rate, we get all these lovely sidebands. We get all these new frequencies that get added to the spectrum of our sound. We did a rough look at the math talking about them, and it is a rough look. There are some really great resources out there for more intense discussions of the math of it, but we got the basic idea, and then we looked in Operator and saw how to implement it. From here, I hope you're able to go out and make some really great sounds and make some cool music using FM synthesis. It's a really popular technique, a cool way to make a lot of different things. Until next time, see you guys later. Have a great day.